Hello, everyone. This is Tim with Online Big Blue. We're bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Oh, my God. I'm on the camera. Yeah, I know. Shock. Surprise. I just want to show you my... Big shot. I just want to show you my, how cool I am because I have the uh, AirPods, pods, buds, whatever the hell. Like, I'm so cool, I don't even know what they're called. And of course, I'm we're matching you with, today. We are back with Mr. Hit Squad. Hey, Mr. Hit Squad. You know what? It has been, I don't know when's the last time we have done anything together. Yeah, it's been a while. It's definitely been a while, man, but I appreciate you having me back on for real. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And let's, you know what? Let's just jump right into it because there's a lot of topics going on. Yeah, Topic number one, Seattle. Now, Man. Daniel Jones, of course, the hamstring, mm -hmm. tried to try to pull a Willis Reed at the last in the, you know last week and play a couple snaps, but uh, hamstring didn't hold up. He's moving better, they say. What do you think the odds are that he plays, or the odds are that he even should play? Um. Okay. So. Odds that he plays, I think they're slim to none. I think the Giants, even if he was 90% healthy, aren't going to risk him playing. I think they want to wait to see he's 100% healthy. So I think it's safe to say for Seattle, I don't see Daniel Jones uh, playing that game. Um, now, Dave, but, Gett uh, Dave Gettleman, Joe Judge says he is making the trip to Seattle. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, at a worst case, you know, maybe have him suit up. But I just, I wouldn't want to risk re-injuring, um, you know, Daniel Jones. Especially, like I said, you know, you know you know how hamstrings are. You know how oh, hard yeah. and tricky they could come, you know, they could be coming back from. And, you know, there's some players where you'll see they might be out for a week or two. And then you have players like as good as Julio Jones is. How many times throughout the season does he deal with a hamstring injury? You know, it's... I, it, and the it's funny common. thing is, I, I have never seen a hamstring injury only last a week. No, I really, no. I've, 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 I was trying to think back to even when I played to, to just watching the NFL. I, I can't remember, you know, just someone coming back within a week from, from an actual hamstring pull. Yeah, and I, I, I can't either. That's why I, I really do think that mm -hmm. I think he'll miss about two games. I know a lot of fans don't want to hear that. I think he will miss two games. I think it's for the best interest of the team as well. Like, I get that we're in a prime position to make the playoffs. I'm not worried about that. I want to take it week by week. And um, I would much rather have him be healthy and, you know, get him back into the swing of things than us rush him back in. And him tweaking that hamstring again and him being out even longer than what he would have been if he was healthy. Well, that that's always been my theory that um... – he, you know, you're making that long flight cross country, and yeah. most people, most people don't realize or don't re don't remember it. When you fly to Seattle, you have to fly back to New York, so it's it's two flights, it's two four yeah. and a half hour flights, and and a hamstring injury on a long flight like that, that could spell a recipe for disaster. Oh, yeah. and then, sitting down and that long too. That's what I'm saying, and and yeah. honestly, and then my other theory is. If he does suit up, we are probably still going to have to carry a third quarterback. Yeah. Only because I of agree. the fact, though, you, if Colt McCoy gets wrecked and Daniel Jones has got the hamstring, who's going to – I mean, I know they're talking about – I mean, well, uh, Alex Tanney and uh, Joe Webb are in uh, a COVID protocol right now. Yep. So, I mean, they, they will be ready for Sunday. But, again, we're also going to lose a roster spot, you know, for that third quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you could cut a player like Devontae Freeman, who was on IR, you know, to make space. Or they might – I know that they put um, – uh, I think it's Hardridge, uh, the, the defensive back. I can't remember his name. Yeah, they signed him. Yeah, he's um, – they actually – I saw that they released him and then put him on the practice squad. Yeah. Um, him and another player as well, whose name I'm forgetting. Well, Freeman's but... not on the active roster. So, you know, they, no. there's, there's, no, there's no issue there. And uh, Kyler uh, Freckwell – my, my old buddy Your Kyler, favorite player. my Your favorite, favorite player. player. He's on, he he was actually just put on the IR, I think, on Tuesday. Yeah. So he's yeah, gonna he miss a, he's gonna miss a couple games. So the question's gonna be, who are you gonna remove to carry the third quarterback? You know, to back up Daniel Jones, who uh, would potentially be backing yeah. up Colt McCoy. Uh, to be real with you, I, I would at least release one of. I know we we just signed the tight end that was from Minnesota. Right. I would release him. I think that, you know, with Caden Smith coming back, there's no need for us to have four tight ends on the roster. 
You know, I, I think that we can get a lot out of Evan Ingram and Kanan Smith. You see Levine Toy Lolo kind of be in the mix as well, especially with like blocking. So I think that you could cut one of yeah, those. He, he finally blocked games. last week. I actually saw him block. I know. I know. <laughs> I almost I fell over. I like, oh my block. God, he blocked someone on the end zone. Well, you know, when I saw him on the field, I was a little shocked. And then I saw him block and I was like, wow, he's actually doing what we brought him in to do. <laughs> and it's about time because because uh, prior to that, he I don't he wasn't on in, uh, in my honest opinion, he wasn't being used correctly or used in the way that I thought that they were going to use him when they signed him. You know, I still don't think that they're using Evan Ingram correctly, though. But that's maybe another video. Well, the, I think the problem with Evan Ingram is he can't catch the ball. He can't catch the ball. He can't stay <laughs> yeah, concentrated. You can't, you can't like, use someone if they can't, you know, oh, if they do one of these. No, you're right. <laughs> you're right. It's it's unfortunate. But, yeah, I would release one of the tight ends just to make space for a third quarterback because I think that we are going to need it. I think it would be smart because especially when you see what's happened with Denver, you see what's happening with Dallas, it's smart to keep another quarterback on the roster. So I would want someone like Alex Tandy, someone that's familiar with the playbook. Now, the big question out of, out of all this is, yeah, who is going to win? Man, uh, as optimistic as I want to be because the defense has been playing good, Seattle's defense isn't good. You can run the ball on them. I'm a true Seattle. Um, I think that they have the better quarterback, Russell Wilson. He's great. He's great. And um, I think that when you look at just offensively, I'm kind of wondering how they're going to, you know, cover Tyler Lockett. I think you could put James Bradbury one-on-one with DK and then maybe have a safety on top, but Tyler Lockett's a sneaky one. So I'm going to have to give it to Seattle. I don't trust the defense outside of Jamal Adams and maybe Snack Harrison, but you know, I, I really got to give it to Seattle. I, I have, I have to apologize right now because, uh, Right now, there, there's there's a computer issue here with my wonderful headphones. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're we're gonna we're gonna have to turn the headphones off and do this old school because for some reason they for some reason they're not working. <laughs> so, hey, it happens. It happens. Mine give out on me too sometimes. Well, you know what? I love the little battery pack because I'm gonna do an iPod. Uh, oh yeah. You know, instead, or headphones or earbuds, whatever they're called, you you have to charge them, even if they're. Yeah. Like, in here if you don't plug this in there they don't work nope but i like how it charges in 15 minutes so oh i didn't know that yeah it charges <laughs> the the airpods in 15 minutes fully all for right three hours get, get away from getting away from the airpods <laughs> earbuds, whatever they're, whatever the hell they're called <sighs> he was making fun of me because i was wearing these <laughs> so yeah those I big was, headphones man i was trying to be young and hip <laughs> did, and you, you tried you it tried did, it didn't work um no I'm gonna say this about the, I'm gonna say this about the Seattle game. Uh, we now ha- outside of Seattle, we now have four winnable games. Arizona is a little bit of a mess. Baltimore with the COVID situation, and then we we take a look at you know Dallas is, is not. We should beat Dallas, and you I never know what you get out of Cleveland. So yeah, to me, it true. makes no, and everyone knows I am not a huge Daniel Jones fan. It is, it is literally not a secret, but, and I said it before, does he give us the best chance to win? Yes, because Absolutely. your starting quarterback should give you the best chance to win over your backup quarterback. Yeah, but I, I agree. With four winnable games and a lot of divisional teams playing each other coming up, it just makes sense right now. To, I would have left him at home. And I would not even got him on the flight. I would just say, you know what, Daniel, you know, you're my you're my guy next week. Just go and rest. Yeah, and then, and I, then I, that's there. a smart approach. Because I don't think we're, you know, and it, it kills me that everyone tells me how bad Seattle is. They have the 26 ranked defense. They have this, and they're bad against this. Yeah, you know what? They got Russell Wilson, and they're eight and three. And then people, will, <laughs> then people will tell you, well, they've only beat two teams with winning records. Yeah, you know what? But they beat the other six guys that they should have beaten. And the Giants, really the Giants cannot say that right now in 2020. You know, yeah. we, we were in yeah. games we should have won. But but that's neither here nor there. I don't think we're going to win in Seattle. I don't think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be 35-17. I think Colt's going to give it a try. Colt is a professional. He's He's been in the league for going on 11 years now. I, I did a video a couple of days ago because I was actually at his pro day. 
Um, and yeah, it was I remember you telling me that. Uh, I mean, uh, Mike McCarthy was there, and I actually overheard him talking to reporters saying he he had the best pro day for a quarterback that he had ever seen. But of course, that never wow. translated into the pros. But he's a pros pro. He, he he's been around the league. He can get us some points. He can hold us over till Daniel Jones is ready. I don't want to risk, you know, potential long-term injury when we we have, like I said, we now have four winnable games. What What is your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, well, I think, you know, going into the season, those four winnable games were games that I thought we would possibly lose, you know. Oh, I thought uh, we, look at Baltimore. If you looked at the schedule at the beginning of the year, I thought we were losing those games. I, I didn't even oh, I didn't yeah. think there was a chance. Yeah, and I agree with you. When you look at Arizona, when you look at, you know, you can make the argument, you know, for Baltimore, we don't know what, how they're going to be at that time, especially during, you know, the whole COVID incident. So I definitely do think that those are winnable games, but I think that this is a game that agreed. You got to tell Daniel Jones, hey, stay home, rest up, win, lose. You know, we're still, we got to take this week by week. And I think that, you know, as Giants fans, you know, we want to see Daniel Jones out there. We want to see him, you know, win these games for us, but we also have to take into consideration what's best long-term. Yep. And I think what's best long-term is to get a game or two out of Colt McCoy. Hopefully this defense can, you know, keep it up and we can establish the run game, but these are winnable games. Arizona's not looking too good. That offense runs through DeAndre Hopkins. And I would trust DeAndre Hopkins lined up with James Bradbury. I would trust uh, James Bradbury to hold his own. Um, when you look at the Ravens, the, the Ravens only problem, are the only problem with the, the only problem with Arizona is you you may trust that. I do not trust our linebackers outside of Blake Martinez with Kyler Murray getting into the second level. I was oh, at the yeah. I was at the Arizona game last <laughs> year. That was and a horrible we, we game. A, that was a bad game. Bad that weather. Was a that. Horrible uh, game. Oh my we, god. Uh, we we different linebacking core, but Kyler Murray is a special talent when it comes to running the ball. We've I've said it before. Daniel, all of Daniel Jones's biggest big runs have come off of plays called by Jason Garrett because he sees the defense over pursuing it being over aggressive. So he took advantage of that. Kyler Murray is like Lamar Jackson. He creates his own. Mm -hmm. Daniel Jones, he takes a little bit of time. He, once he gets up ahead of speed, yeah, he's running. But, you know, he it's kind of – it's it's a bad analogy, but it's like Daniel Jones goes goes from a rhino to a cheetah. You know, the rhino's got to pick up the speed, but once he gets his speed going, he's got cheetah speed. And that's, yeah, what, I, that's what I like to I say. Agree. But he's got to get that head of steam going. Kyler Murray is totally different. Yeah. He, he goes I, I, from 0 I, I, to 60 in 2.8 seconds. Yeah, and when you look at Kyler, I think that he's not a running quarterback. I think he's a quarterback that can run. Yes. Because he's a, he, he can throw that ball. There is a lot of plays where it's just like, it seems like that ball is up in the air for so long, yeah, exactly. but it's just so accurately placed. I, and it's like, I, love, you know, I love watching the Arizona games. I admit, that's what I love about the dish. You, know, you get all the games. And I, I, I have yeah. to admit, I, the Arizona games I like watching and the Baltimore games I like watching. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Baltimore, they're not the same Baltimore team of last year. I don't think that they're unbeatable. I think that a lot of teams have really caught on to, you know. Well, the, the problem the is 479 team. of their players have COVID. Yeah, they're playing with like their and, fourth string team. They're about to they, call the longest They're literally team. averaging a player a day testing positive. That's that's insane. So I mean, that's insane. And I, I laughed because I had a subscriber tell me the only way we were going to beat Baltimore is if they all got COVID. And I I sent him an email last night and I said, well, I said, uh, let's see, there's uh, how many men on the roster? Fifty what? And ten are down already. <laughs> so I said, we're so we're getting there. We got a couple more weeks, so we're getting there. Yeah, we, we 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 got there. And you know, we don't know how long it's going to take for those players to come back. We don't know how they're going to play coming back because they're going to have some time that they've missed. Um, so we don't know, but looking at these games, they're not unbeatable. Um, I, I don't think it's a big deal if the Giants lose uh, this week, to be honest with you, with Seattle. If they win, I think that'll be a strong testament, you know, to um, Joe Judge and, you know, his staff and, you know, how well prepared he has this crew and how well the defense has been playing. But if they lose, I, I just kind of see it as this is a team that the Giants weren't going to beat regardless. You know, Seattle's a great team, and they have an amazing quarterback in Russell Wilson. Um, Tyler Lockett is an amazing receiver. Paired along with DJ Met, uh, DK Metcalf, 
oh, yeah. who is looking like the seven, second coming of Calvin Johnson. I know a lot of people have been saying that. I know um, Jim, uh, what was it? Jim Schwartz went up to him uh, when they played and told him that he's not Calvin Johnson, and apparently that pissed him off. And he he got 177 yards. So hopefully nobody yeah. says anything to him you in the beginning of the game. You shouldn't people off. <laughs> you shouldn't say. Why would you say that? Why would you say that when the last time you played him, which was last year, he torched you guys? Why are you saying that when he's having a very good year? That it's makes smoke, no sense. It's not being smart. <laughs> so. Well, I, I I think that's the Philly brand. If you if you're asking me, but. I'm not going to get into that. You know, I don't want to go. I don't want to go into the woods, find a bear, and poke him with a stick. <laughs> yeah, and, no, and, no. And no. You don't do that. Me. I mean, like, oh, you, you don't do that. They used to say, you know, players wouldn't go up to Tom Brady before a game, and you know, talk their talk. And then Jalen Ramsey does that a couple of years back, and you know, people were shocked that he did that before the game, and Jacksonville lost. <laughs> I was like, you oh, know, no. there's there's just some players you just don't. How did that playoff talk game end up for Jalen Ramsey? <laughs> it didn't end up good. I'll tell you that much. It did not end up good. So you were just yeah. talking about the giant defense. Yes, I have said um, I don't know if going on pretty much since week four or five that we have a top ten ranked defense, and right now I believe we have the tenth top tenth defense in the NFL. Yeah, we do. We do. What is, I mean, what are, what is, I mean, I, everyone knows how I feel about the defense. Like, like I said, I've been saying they're top 10 all year. What is your thoughts about the Giants defense? I love it. I love what I'm seeing. Uh, you know, going into this year, I definitely thought the offense was going to go off to a quicker start than the defense, because just looking at the defense the last couple of years, you know, they haven't been able to get it right. We haven't been able to develop pressure. We haven't been able to get off the field on third down. So looking at the teams that we were going to play, you know, I, I was somewhat optimistic the defense would be okay, but I never thought the defense would be top 10, especially not having not only just a solid edge rusher, but a number two corner. And there, I think we can oh, agree. Come on, man. We, you, uh, come on. Isaac Yadam, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. He's a him solid and, number seven Corey Ballantine, corner. right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's – I, I really like what I'm seeing. I think that, you know, I had a lot of questions on Patrick Graham. Um, I know you and I kind of spoke about it uh, when he was coming from Miami. Was it more of Brian Flores? Was it more Patrick Graham? I think it, you know, Miami's defense is still pretty solid. So I think that, you know, it could have been both. But I love how the Giants defense has been playing. I think that's the one uh, side of the ball that I've been trusting a lot more week in and week out. And I think that if there is a chance the Giants do win against Seattle, it would come against the defense. Only because I've seen in the last couple of weeks, Russell Wilson's been taking a lot of sacks. He doesn't have a good offensive line, but he's been holding onto the ball a lot more than he needs to, which is kind of rare for Russell Wilson. I'm sure he he'll get that clear. He have 31 touchdown passes right now. Oh, yeah. He's he's lighting it up. I mean, in the beginning of the year, even I, I thought that you know he was in the MVP talk, but the last couple of weeks – you know, things have been slowing down, but I don't think that that's going to last a long time. I think that if there were a game for Seattle fans to say, okay, what is not going to click back in? What is he going to get hot again? You can make the argument to be against the Giants. I wouldn't argue that. I mean, we don't have a second corner. I don't know how we're going to stop Tyler Lockett. I don't know how we're going to stop someone like Russell Wilson who can, when you think the play is done, he, he, he torches you. Yeah. So I... Man, it's gonna be a fun game, but I'm not, I'm not looking to the the butt whooping, to be honest with you. All that said and done, the Giants, let's say, lose Seattle. Mm-hmm. What is going on record right now? What is your final prediction for the season? For the season, huh? Well, let's see. You got you got Arizona left. I think they win that game. So that would put us at, what's that, five and eight? Yep. Five and eight. I think that we have a chance to beat the Ravens, um, but I'm not too sure. So I want to put that as a loss just in case, because I'm not sure how they're going to be coming back from this COVID situation. Cleveland, I think I don't trust Baker Mayfield. I am more fearful I trust of their Nick defense. Chubb. I trust the defense too, but just looking at their offense, 
I I fear more Nick Chubb than anything because Nick Chubb is have known Kareem to Kareem Hunt too. Yeah, they have Kareem Hunt too. I mean, if if they had Odell, I would say you know okay, we have our hands full. But I think that's a winnable game. So all in all, I could really see the Giants winning. I think they could go seven and nine. I think they could go seven and nine. I think they beat Dallas. I think they beat Arizona, and I think they beat Cleveland. But I do think that they lose to the Ravens in Seattle, which nobody really has us winning those games anyway. So I don't think that should really be a shot. But with how this team has been playing, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they went all four or yeah, three he, out of their four. But he, here's, here's the last big question. Yes. Daniel Jones plays in Seattle, tears his hamstring, out for the season. What's your prediction then? <laughs> My real prediction, man, that's we're going four and twelve, man. We're going four and twelve. I just don't trust Cole McCoy like that. I think that he's a good game manager. I think that you know when you don't put more on his plate than what he needs, and you're not asking him to put the team on your back or to extend the field or air the ball out. He's a serviceable he can, quarterback, he can, but, the, he can air the ball out. He's got. I mean, he's like I said, he doesn't have. You know, he doesn't have the, you know, the biggest arm in the world, but I even predicted that the giant offense is going to trust him more with the deep pass than Daniel Jones. Cause everyone's always saying, why, you know, why isn't, you know, you know, why isn't Daniel Jones throwing deep more often because they're not calling those plays. And when he no. is throwing deep, he's missing. I yeah. have, I mean, I, and I'm telling people to mark it down right now. They will be at least two deep throws within the first 15 minutes from the Giants offense. You know what? I, I like that. I, I, I really I do like that. You kind of have to, you kind of, especially if you're starting your second string quarterback, you kind of have to shock the world. And what you also I mean, need to do is you need to stretch that defense and you have to keep them honest. So they're not putting eight in the box. Yeah. Cause we saw what Jamal Adams did to us last year against the Jets. So I don't, yeah. I don't even see that again. Uh, I mean, I, I can see that. I mean, I don't think that Colt McCoy is a terrible quarterback. I mean, I said that in my video before. I don't think that he's a terrible quarterback. I think that he's a solid backup, but I just don't want to see him airing the ball out 30 times a game. I would much rather us run the ball more just looking at this isn't a, a good Seattle defense, like, at all. They've been giving up a ton of yards, a lot through the ground. With how Wayne Gallman has been playing and how well this offensive line has been playing, why not run the ball a lot in this game? But I, I, I definitely do want to see us throw the ball a little bit. I want to see us get Evan Ingram more involved. But uh, you, you, actually brought up, Ingram. You, you actually brought up a key point, though, is Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams, yeah. when he went to Seattle, had some issues. You know, it wasn't a talent issue. He, it was a scheme issue. But in the last four weeks, he he's playing Landon Collins good. And I even said it before when Landon Collins was good. That's that's right. the type of yeah. level he's playing right now. And he's going to be playing in the box. So, yeah. you know, so I, I they think still we'll have, they still have some run stuffers on that team. And isn't uh, isn't Snacks? On uh, the yeah. Seattle, Na Snacks is on their on their roster, but he hasn't been the same Snacks, you know, since he really left us. To be honest with you, he was decent in Detroit, didn't really work out too well. Um, he did okay against Philly, yeah. But you know, I, I, I that's not the Snacks that if, if this was 2016, 2017, I, I'd be a little bit more concerned. But, but you also have to remember it is the motivation to play the team that got rid of you. That's true. No, that, that's definitely true. I just, they don't have a good run attack defense. I, their pass defense scares me a little bit more. Um, I mean, Shaq Griffin is okay. Their other corner is suspect. They got a, a pretty good safety outside of Jamal Adams. Um, they got it from Detroit. Uh, I think it's Quadre Diggs. I think his yeah. name is. Um, you know, he's pretty decent, but I don't know. They've been getting torn up week in and week out, and um, at least on the defensive side of the ball. But like but, I said, if I think if we could establish still the run, three. <laughs> I know, yeah, I, and I think a lot of that. Looking at Seattle, I think that a lot of that definitely comes from Russell Wilson. Right. You know, with those wins, uh, because I I think that if and I think it speaks more to Russell Wilson. But I think that if you take Russell Wilson out of that Seattle team and you put another quarterback in there. I don't think they're that great of a team. 
I think a lot of their plays and a lot of their wins really come off of the back of Russell Wilson. Question. Yeah. Question, because everyone knows that I'm a huge Daniel Jones fan. What if you take Daniel Jones at his and put him on the Seattle team? What is Seattle's record? Man, I think are we How talking about this year's so the, Daniel so Jones? It, or last it's year's it's, Daniel it's Jones? kind of put up for shut up time. No, Daniel Jones right now. You take Daniel right now, Jones, now. put him on Seattle. Everything you said that was wrong with the Seattle defense and everything that they're relying on with uh, Russell Wilson, what is Seattle's record eight with Daniel eight. Jones as quarterback? I think eight and eight. Eight and eight. Wow. I, I think they would lose five of those games that they won. Excuse me. Um, not lose. Excuse me. I think that they would lose five more games than what they have at the moment with the three, but I think eight and eight, to be honest with you. And I like Daniel Jones, but I'm just looking at – Russell Wilson is, let's be real, a wizard of a quarterback. That's There's why I, so would, many, I would think they would be five and eleven with Daniel Jones. I think five and eleven is fair. Um, the first number that comes to my head, to be honest with you, is really, it's really seven and nine, and I, I don't think that's bad. I think Daniel Jones has room to grow, but just I've heard, and I, I have a couple friends that are Seahawks fans that have told me that. They don't like some of the plays that Pete Carroll calls. It seems very old school. He doesn't seem to update his playbooks. And a lot of these extraordinary plays that we see from Russell Wilson, these nice touchdowns, they're all plays that Russell Wilson is calling. So it kind of draws me to question, okay, if they had another quarterback in there, how good would they really be? You know, and I I, I think they would at least be seven and nine, eight and eight. You have, you have more. I mean, like I said, I am, and I, I hate when people say, "Well, you're a Daniel Jones hater." No, I, I just no. point out things that honest. are that are that are honest about his game. I mean, when the guy has eight touchdowns, nine interceptions, and barely twenty two hundred yards, I mean, yeah. you know, it's barely completing sixty percent of his passes, and you're telling me he's our uh, future quarterback. I, 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 I get slightly concerned. I see Danny yeah, Pennell. I see Kent Graham. I see Jeff Rutledge. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, he hasn't been playing too good. I think the last couple of weeks, excuse me, he's been playing pretty fair. He hasn't well, turned over the ball. In the three thing games. is, everyone's saying how well he's playing, but the problem is they're not saying that, you know, he's completing a high, perce- you know, high percentage passes. He's not going deep. They're saying that he's playing well because he's not turning over the ball. I yeah. could play well at quarterback if I didn't turn over the ball. And I'm 497 yeah, years old. <laughs> you were around when the first wheel came out i i was it was me and moses hanging out you know <laughs> yeah, but and not man. charlton heston moses from the ten commandments real moses real um moses. And that's how and that's how even older i am because i'm talking about charlton heston and everyone's going to be googling now going who the hell is charlton? <laughs> <laughs> but like i said oh, I, i'm just saying though if he's our franchise guy He's got to show. He's got to show. First of all, he's got to beat a team with a winning record, and he's got yeah, that's a true. team that's you know not named. Well, well, he did beat a team not named Washington. <laughs> so he, he 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 did. Now I want to I want to ask you something really quickly. Let's say he comes back next week against Arizona. Let's say he beats Arizona. Let's say he beats the Ravens. Does that, in your mind, change your perspective a little bit on Daniel Jones? considering that you know it's a fair argument to say that outside of Washington he hasn't really beat anybody he beat up a bagged up Philly team Philly hasn't been the same the yeah. last couple of years well, um they I want to... Carson Wentz is what cost him that game oh, Daniel, Daniel Jones didn't win Carlson year. Carson Wentz caught Carson Wentz cost him the game and there was opportunities because we went to that damn soft shell zone and he, you know, and he was if he would have actually hit the guys that were open, we would have lost that game. Yeah, I think it would have been a different game. And you know what? I, he, I'm not going to. He complain. had some guys that were wide open, and I'm like, oh dear lord, we have to play. We have to be a man press defense, you know. And I and I don't understand why. And then some people are like, well, he goes into the soft shell zone when we're when we have the lead. No, he doesn't. He plays in the first quarter. He plays in the second quarter. He, it's 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 maddening sometimes. Because okay. even Isaac, my buddy Yitam, plays a better man-to-man coverage than he does zone. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree there. And um, 
I think James Bradbury plays a lot better doing man than he does in zone as well. Yes. So, you know, I, I don't dislike Isaac Yano, but at the same time, I don't think he's the long-term answer at all. I think that they need we're, to we're, address We're going to go and have beers together. <laughs> I, I, I hope. Maybe you could give him a couple tips, and hopefully we'll see you on the field at some point. But to your question, if Daniel Jones wins those games, the question is, what did Daniel Jones do? Did the games get one? Is he doing what he's been doing the last three weeks where he's like 17 for 24 for 214 and one touchdown or no touchdowns? Or is he 22 for out of 30 for 300 yards and four touchdowns? I mean, that's that's the thing. You can be a game manager or you could be a game winner. And right now he's been a game manager. I, I don't think there's an argument there. Um, I definitely do miss seeing the Daniel Jones that we saw last year where he would have these 300 plus yard games, four touchdowns, no interceptions. And you're thinking to yourself, look wow, at the he's teams that, insane, Look at the teams but, that he had those games against though. That's very true. That's so, very I mean, true. That's, that's, Washington, the Jets. Yeah, not, no, not, yeah. not powerhouses. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree. Look how he there. played against New England. And I, yeah, and, I mean, I a lot, I and I know a lot of people like to say, well, the New England game was closer than the score. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, nah, no I, I, it I wasn't. It was closer, but I, I remember that he was the first QB, I think it was like on a couple weeks stretch, that was able to throw a touchdown pass against that New England team. Now, ooh, cool. Like, But you know what? For a rookie QB against that really good defense to – you know, really pull that off. I love that pass to Golden Tate. I thought that was a better catch on Golden Tate than that, the pass. You know, and that's what a lot of people, you know, okay, Eli Manning to Mario Manningham. That was a great catch, but that was a pinpoint throw on the sideline. Big, that yeah. play to get cleaner Tate than that. was Golden Tate. And, yeah. and people don't give credit where credit was due with Golden Tate. Yeah. Even with that first Philly game, uh, when uh, Philly went down, they scored the ball. Daniel Jones came back, threw that beautiful down to Golden Tate. That was a better catch, in my opinion, than it was of the throw. Still a good throw, but Golden Tate has shown that he can, when he needs to, he can really go up there and get that ball. But I I agree with you there, man. I mean, mean, for me, to kind of answer my own question, it would kind of change my perspective on Daniel Jones, but again, I think the other question that it brings to is, was he the game winner or was he the game manager in that game? Um, and yeah, you're right. Recently, he's been playing like a game manager. And, um, you know, I think for your franchise guy, you would want someone that can do both more of a game winning QB, but I think you need someone that can do both. And um, I think that he can be both, but until he has shown me that he can, I gotta, I gotta chill on that a little bit. I gotta pump the brakes. Till I see you. Well, we're going to end it right there because I don't want this to run too long. So uh, I'm going to give you, as always, the last thought. Yeah. So uh, I want to get your guys' thoughts below. Uh, what were your thoughts on uh, how this defense is coming along? I think that, you know, Leonard Williams is having a career year. Um, I think a lot of the players that we have brought in are having career years with us. I got to tip my hat off to Patrick Graham. But what are your thoughts on the defense below? How much trust do you put in Colt McCoy? I know your answer already, Tim, but I want to hear everybody else's thoughts below. And um, again, I want to say thank you for having me on the show. It really means a lot. I always love working with you, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, if you can ring that bell, I think you know what that means. That'll be awesome. Thanks again. It's just a Thanks for coming on. No problem, man. <laughs>